Well, hello from the homestead. I'm Beth. This is Hitch Chick Urban Homestead. And today on the menu, we have meatloaf. Now, this isn't just your ordinary run-of-the-mill meatloaf. This ain't your grandma's meatloaf. This is, well, it's a zhuzhed up meatloaf. Don't ask me what zhuzh means. Don't ask me how to spell it. All I know is it is out of this world. Now, this is a copycat recipe. And I do need to give a shout out to the source of this here recipe. And I got this recipe and I hope I'm not really doing too much damage to the channel name. But the channel is In the Kitchen with Gina Young. And um, I just started watching her a couple of days ago. And um, the very first video I watched was her meatloaf video. Let me tell you, my mouth was watering by the time she got done with that video. I decided then and there, I had to make the meatloaf. I'm gonna be making a few modifications along the way. Um, maybe I don't have the ingredient. Um, it does call for um, cornflake crumbs. I have a corn allergy. So I'm gonna su substitute that. Um, it calls for red bell pepper. I don't have any. I do, however, have paprika. So, you know, you can't have paprika without starting with a red bell pepper. I don't think. Anyway, I'm using paprika because that's what I have. So I'm gonna spin you down to my bowl of ground beef and let's get this video started because, you know, Mark's gonna be home in about two hours. I've had errands all day, went to the gym. I haven't even started supper. So we kind of need to hurry. Let's get started. All righty. In my bowl, I have three pounds of ground beef. And Miss Gina says that you can do all ground beef. You can mix up the meats, add, you know, if you want to add lamb or veal or pork to it, go right ahead. And um, so next thing we need three eggs. So I have three of my farm fresh eggs. So we'll throw those in. Wow. Rainbow colored eggs, light brown, dark brown, and green. And then it calls for cornflake crumbs. Again, corn allergy. Um, unless I missed it somewhere, she didn't give a specific amount of cornflake crumbs. So I'm just going to kind of, I don't know, grab my rice checks. And we'll just kind of squish those up. Um, what do you think? Two big handfuls? Maybe one more. Yeah, that looks good. Now let's get those out of the way. Alrighty, and then it calls for a quarter of a cup of milk. But you know what? I think I'm supposed to put that in at the last and just use enough just to moisten everything. Um, we need ketchup, and Miss Gina gave just a couple of good squirts. Yeah, there, that looks good. Uh, 
and it calls for mustard. Again, just kind of, I don't know, a couple of tablespoons maybe. Okay, now what? Now we need onions. And Miss Gina said to use um, one medium onion. I don't have any fresh onions, so I'm going to use onions that I canned up from myself. You know what? Let's just do it that way. Now it calls for um, a green bell pepper. I don't have a fresh bell pepper. I do, however, have peppers from my own garden that I canned up. So I'm just gonna go in and with my scissors and kind of chop them up a little bit. And these peppers were just canned in their own juices and um, water. There's no brine or anything like that added to them. Trying not to get too much of the extra liquid. Alrighty. And then, because we don't have a red bell pepper, I'm going in with just some regular ground paprika. Um, I don't know, about a tablespoon? Okay, now it needs garlic powder. Um, she used quite a bit, so I'm gonna go with maybe two tablespoons. And then it calls for parsley. Um, you know what? I don't think I have any parsley. Hang on. Okay, I don't have any parsley. Now, the next thing we need is a packet of onion soup mix. Onion soup mix. And a packet of ranch dressing mix. That goes in there. And then it, she uses something called um, Herb de Provence which I had no idea what that was. I googled it and basically it seems like it's just Italian seasoning. So I am using, I don't particularly care for Italian seasoning, so I'm only going to use about a teaspoon. Alrighty, so now that's everything and I'm just going to put a little bit of milk at a time in. I'm not going to use a whole quarter of a cup yet but the uh, onions holy Moses that's cold. Woo -wee! The onions and the peppers were out in the outside pantry. You know what? I'm going to wash my hands, see if I can find a really big spoon and stir it with the spoon. That is just too cold. And you want to just gently mix everything together. Yeah, I'm not going to add any more milk. I do think I'm going to add some more of the rice checks to just help bind it a little bit better. As it is right now, it's not even going to hold its shape if I go to form it into a meat loaf. Okay. 
So now I'm going to take a second to uh, kind of get everything cleaned up so I have a nice clean surface to work on. And uh, then we'll come back and we will um, make this into a loaf and uh, pop it in the oven. Alrighty. So I've got my pan here. Now what I'm going to do, just to try to help with the cleanup just a little bit, I'm going to line it with parchment. And if you can't get your paper to lay flat, take a second, wrinkle it up really good, and spread it out and it should lay flatter. There we go. Now I just take a few of these binder clips and kind of clip down the sides a little bit. There we go. Now we'll just pile our meat mixture right in the middle. Well, this pan is going to be completely filled with meatloaf. Alrighty, and there we go. We'll put it in a preheated 350 degree oven for 45 minutes. And then we'll take it out, we'll put our sauce on top and put it back in for another 15 or 20 minutes. Alrighty, get my hands cleaned up. And into the oven it goes. So the meatloaf is in the oven. I will bring you back in roughly 45 to 55 minutes and uh, we'll make up the sauce. Put it back in for another few minutes. Let that sauce get nice and um, just permeate that meatloaf. And uh, we'll plate it up and then we'll call this project done. The meatloaf has been baking for roughly an hour, give or take a few minutes. So we'll take it out, see what it looks like, make up the sauce, throw it back in. I'm going to drain off some of these juices before I put the sauce on. Um, it's mostly uh, fat drippings and we just don't really need to eat all that fat. All right, that looks pretty good. Yeah, it's going to need about another 20 minutes. So to make the sauce, um, we need a little bit of honey. And I'm going to make plenty so that we can uh, have it to dip our meatloaf in after it's done. So... I'm going to say probably about a quarter of a cup of honey. And then we need ketchup. About a quarter of a cup. And the recipe calls for tomato sauce. I don't have any plain tomato sauce, so I'm going to use tomato paste. Do a little taste test. I think I'm going to add some more honey. Why? Because I can. Oh yeah. Perfect. So we'll just spread it over the meatloaf. Just like so. I'm going to throw it back in the oven 
for about 20 minutes and I'll bring you back. In the meantime, I'm going to wash some potatoes and uh, put them in the Instant Pot and figure out what I'm going to do with them after that. So this is going back in the oven and I'll bring you back when we're all ready to be plated. The uh, meatloaf is completely finished. I'm going to take it out of the oven and the potatoes are still um, depressurizing in the Instant Pot so I'm not going to mess with that. Here we go. And that is how we do meatloaf. So let's take a taste. Ooh, look at the inside of that. Yum. Nice and tender, plenty juicy. Okay, I'm going to give that a second to cool down. That is piping hot. So here we go, and just a reminder that this is the recipe that I um, am attempting to copycat from In the Kitchen with Gina Young, and um, I will post a uh, I card to her channel so you can check her out. In the meantime, let's see how I did. You know, I don't like meatloaf. I haven't been able to just stand meatloaf pretty much my entire life. This, this is perfection. So, um, yeah, I'm quite pleased. So, um, Gina, if you catch this video, I want to say thank you for sharing your recipe. And um, from Hitch Chick Urban Homestead, I'm going to dish up Barra Workaholic, aka Mark, dish up his dinner, get him fed, and I'm going to call this video a wrap and a success. So thank you again for stopping by. I'll catch you later. And just to give you a little bit of tantalizing temptation, look at that. Yum. See ya.